Mheshimiwa Rais Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta kikagua le Gwaride ni wakati wake mkuu wa Gwaride hili umuomba idhini na ili apate kuendelea na Gwaride watakazo enda ni hatua 1500 eh
mchezo huu unajulikana kama Chris Crossing wanapishana hakuna ambaye anaguza mwenzake zozote ni hesabu kana kama chest bicep bicep tricep chezo unajulikana kama back bicep makofi tafadhali asante sana
kabisa mbele yako kiongozi ana mkubwa kwa ile
Pass from number 200703-1492, Inspector Joyce Ogango. The training offered here in Gilgil and the subsequent engagement of these young men and women in nation building activities sets them apart from their peers by instilling in them the values of discipline, diligence, patriotism, and nationhood. This is the unique selling point of our youth that guarantees that the job market dependable workforce. Enlistment of our servicemen and women into the discipline services will therefore enhance these values in those services. Besides, that, besides, those that graduate with trade in different skills areas have proved to be a cut above the rest as attested by their employers. Your Excellency Sir, I want to thank you most sincerely for the continued support to the service and the love you've showed to the youth of this country by championing their training and job placement. Your Excellency, your presence with us today demonstrates your continued determination to ensure that the youth access quality training and discipline for the labor market and to support national development. Your Excellency, sir, I wish to thank National Youth Service Council, management and the staff for strengthening National Youth Service governance to deliver on the expanded mandate. The performance of the council and the management has demonstrated high standards of professionalism, patriotism, and high standards of ethical practices. And the excellence, that's why for almost the fourth year, we have not witnessed any unethical issues in the institution. Your Excellency, sir, National Youth Service has made notable development contribution spread across the national and the build. The contribution in manufacturing, food security, and housing, uh, to name a few, target providing timely solutions to national development challenges. One of the issues that we have pondered over is how we can prepare every Kenyan youth for their personal destiny. The interventions that we have put in place include fostering greater access to technical and vocational education, creating a framework through which our youth would have greater access to government procurement opportunities, creation and expansion of youth affirmative action funds, such as the Youth Fund, the UESO Fund, as well as the expansion of this NYS program. And undoubtedly, the NYS program has been a tremendous success. And for that reason, despite the disruptions caused by COVID-19, we have remained resolute on empowering our youth through the NYS, which has seen an additional 14,779 young people admitted into the NYS this calendar year. Indeed, through the NYS training programs, we now have a critical mass of employable youth with a reputation for discipline, diligence, excellence, and hard work. This sterling reputation has stood the test of time, and I therefore urge you, the class graduating today, to maintain these high standards as you move on to the next phase of your service to Kenya. Since independence, the National Youth Service has been instrumental in our national development. Recognizing this enormous contribution, we have placed the NYS at the center of the implementation of various key Government of Kenya projects. 
For example, the service recently entered into a partnership with the Kenya Power and Lighting Company by which NYS participated in a countrywide exercise to improve KPLC's efficiency in delivering electricity to all corners of Kenya. NYS assisted KPLC by ensuring that the company has an up-to-date data set of all its physical assets, including all prepaid and postpaid meters. In other areas, especially of national security, we have seen the NYS involved in the digitization of data at the lands department. We have seen the NYS involved in the national addressing system. And the NYS has also been enlisted at the Integrated Communications Command and Control Center, IC3, to respond to telephone calls and other electronic communications from members of the public. This is in addition to NYS's role in augmenting the work of the police in crowd control duties during significant local as well as international functions. The service has remained a dependable entity in emergency response and disaster management. Ladies and gentlemen, these are just but a few examples of how the NYS has become an even more critical player in our development spectrum, and the class graduating today can expect to similarly be called upon to contribute to a variety of development areas, particularly within the Big Four agenda. When we conceptualized the Big Four agenda, we were determined to direct our resources and efforts to those issues and projects with the greatest impact on the well-being of our people. To succeed, we all need to rethink our approach to the social economic development of our country. NYS has become a critical player and also an enabler of the Big Four agenda across the four pillars, but particularly in food security and manufacturing. Today, we are glad to note that the Textile and Garment Technology Institute has been modernized through the acquisition of new machines and equipment to enhance efficiency and quality. This has expanded the production capacity of the factory 20-fold from 100 pieces a day in 2013 to 2,205 pieces per day today. Apart from the garment factory, it is also notable that the service has commenced the process of acquiring equipment to automate the mineral water bottling venture located in Turbo field unit. In addition, bakery equipment and allied accessories have been installed for the production of bakery products here in Gilgil. In support of our national food security, the NYS service has produced last year approximately 1,661 tons of food items from its various farm units across the country. And I note also that the service has set aside 100 acres at the turbo field unit to upscale certified potato seed production. With all these initiatives in place, there is no reason why the service cannot be fully self-sustaining in addition to adding to the resources available to the national